Welcome back to the Monday Morning Show. A full hour of hardcore pornography your grandmother is going to lo- What? Talking shit? We're really doing that? Okay then, today is August 1st, 2019, and I'm Ken LaSalle, novelist and writer of other stuff as well from KenLaSalle.com, and this is Talking Shit. The life of an author is a solitary one. In my case, I left the very social life of an actor. Actors are always going to shows and parties and you name it, you're always around people. To the less social life of a playwright. You're still invited to shows, but there aren't as many invitations to parties and you notice fewer people around. Then, I left the theater entirely, basically just tired of the politics, for the social desert that is the life of an author. I'm not saying I mind it that much. Actually, it it suits me. But there are still times when I'd like to get just a few things off my chest. You know? And while I do have a few friends and a wonderful wife, I think... For the sake of my existing relationships, I find another outlet for all of my thoughts and ponderings. A place where I can talk some shit. Welcome. So, it's the end of July, 2019, and I find myself watching another Democratic debate. I never miss a debate. Politics are my sports. Which is only fitting, since CNN is making this into a bigger show than the Super Bowl. One of the moments that really caught my ear was Senator Elizabeth Warren's promise not to launch a first nuclear strike as president. To be clear, this means that if elected president, she would remove the United States' nuclear first strike ability from the proverbial table. And, of course, the nearest politician who needed to score points because he wasn't polling well just had to chime in. And that politician was Montana Governor Steve Bullock giving a textbook performance of just why you don't want to try to sound tough in a Democratic primary. I'm not saying I'd use them, but I'd use them, you can bet, but I'd never use them except I might, but I won't, but I, uh... It wasn't pretty. Now, I had another idea about what I wanted to cover in this first episode, and then I watched Governor Bullock explode on entry. Peace, my friends. Let's talk some shit about peace. When I first sat down to brainstorm some ideas for this podcast, way back in 2014, one of the first notes I wrote down one of the first topics I wanted to talk about, is actually still sitting there on my list of topics. It reads, What if the United States made a pledge for peace? I never recorded that episode for one very good reason. The United States isn't interested in peace. I know that's a rather bold claim, but just consider our history. Or, better still, run a web search for the terms United States and Pledge for Peace. You won't find very much. You won't find much in our history, either. Oh, sure, many Americans of note through the centuries have wished for peace. Many have promoted peace. Many have sung about it spoken up about it, written books, painted murals, danced in there. The problem is our government has never really been very interested. We have fought war after war, but when it comes to peace, we don't have much fight in us. We go to the UN, 
a governing body established in the interests of peace. And what do we do? Often, we go there to promote whatever war we're interested in pursuing or have already begun to pursue. All the while, we keep our nukes trained on the rest of the world, which brings me back to Senator Warren. She says that giving our word that we won't strike first would put the world at ease and put us at ease. I think that's pretty easy to understand. You train nukes at somebody, they're gonna get nervous. But Warren's proposal was pretty much met with silence on that stage the other night. Why do you think that is? Keep in mind, this is just a proposal that we don't nuke someone before they nuke us. It doesn't take our considerable military out of play. It doesn't say we won't drop other types of bombs on people if you're so inclined. It doesn't say we won't use mines, though most of the world is trying to stop that practice as well. There are a lot of steps we can genuinely take that go much further than saying we won't destroy your cities and your ability to live. But that step, that one step, was too much for the nine other candidates on that stage. Why is that? What happened to America to make us so afraid of the rest of the world? Is it because we're so helpless? We have the largest military in the world. We pay more for our military than the next nine largest nations pay for theirs. I might actually have that wrong. It may be ten. Because they aren't preparing to fight the rest of the world. But the United States is. The only reason for having a larger military budget than any other nation is so we have the capacity to destroy them, after all. So, we're not helpless. We're not fragile. We won every war we were in up until Vietnam. Korea wasn't technically a war, though we lost that the minute we entered. Would you like a list of the wars we Americans generally admit we lost? Vietnam. That's it. Korea, as I mentioned, wasn't a war, and we don't admit to losing in Afghanistan or Iraq. We won't even leave those places for crying out loud. Okay, so we openly admit to losing one war in more than 200 years. We're not exactly wimps. So why are we so afraid? Why do we clutch our guns in fear and arm ourselves to the teeth? Why do we allow the military-industrial complex to suck us dry just as Dwight D. Eisenhower, yes, a Republican president, warned us about in 1961? Why must we strike first? Why are we so afraid? Because I think that's the real issue here. People who aren't afraid don't need to look tough. That's all there is to it. Americans are terrified of foreigners and natives alike. We fear what's in our food and in our vaccines, but we also fear the regulations that can assuage those fears. We fear because we are taught to fear. And most of the time, it's the Republican Party stoking those fears. And I wish I had some insight as to why this is. When I was a child in the 70s, Americans hated foreigners, sure, but they didn't fear them. Americans hated their neighbors, but they didn't fear them. Of course, I'm mostly talking about the white ones. 
Americans have been a hateful breed for as long as I can remember. There's nothing shocking about that. But they haven't always been so fearful. And I just want to mention parenthetically that I grew up poor and enjoyed few economic advantages. I couldn't get scholarships or loans for college because I didn't want to be in debt for the rest of my life, so I attended college at a slower pace. I've had two homes broken into, but I never felt the need to own a gun. I've been in some scary places, but I never let that change me. I walk at night unarmed. I talk to strangers. I'm not at all edgy in any way, but I think you can live without fear. I think you should live without fear. I just wish our politicians, our government, our populace believed the same. Because when I ran that web search that I mentioned, I used Google, I had to look hard to find any connection to the United States and any pledge for peace. And though there's not much available halfway through 2019, I felt there were some connections worth discussing. House Resolution 1111, for instance, has been presented in both the 115th and 116th Congress. And this proposes establishing a Department of Peace Building. You probably heard the big difference here. Not peace, but peace building. And I kind of dig that idea. It's very pragmatic. The choice of words says you're not just going to instantly have peace because we passed a bill or a law. You go about building peace through, you guessed it, peace building. But the thing I really like about this, and don't get your hopes up, it's only been introduced on the House floor, not voted on, is that it addresses peace both internationally and domestically. Because we Americans are more afraid of each other than we are of foreigners, depending on the day of the week and how much chicken wire we have for building cages. We all have to address the fear in our own lives, And I mean that as an individual. Because if we're fearful as a nation, it's only because we are each afraid. The work of peace building is work we should all aspire to. I encourage you to look into H.R. 1111. I found out about it by reading the peacepledge.world website. There are plenty of great websites that focus on the task of peace, and the Peace Alliance at peacealliance.org is another great one. They're promoting something called DC Advocacy Days, which is an event happening in Washington, D.C. late in September to help promote the idea of peace building. I really hope they get some events going out here on the West Coast, mostly because I can't get out to Washington, D.C. Again, the Peace Alliance is only one group trying to do the work of promoting the idea of peace. I've got one more group I want to tell you about, and this is unusual for me because this is about kids. And I'm not the biggest fan of kids. What can I say? They were shitty to me when I was a kid, and they're probably just as shitty now. But the tragedy of violence in the world or in their homes hits them hardest. And it did my heart good to find Kids for Peace online at kidsforpeaceglobal.org. Because we adults aren't doing a damn thing to ensure a safe world for children. And if we can't set an example, maybe they can. Why doesn't the United States pledge that they, we, will be on the side of peace? Probably just out of practice. We're too used to war. We wage war for oil. We wage war on drugs, whatever that means. Hell, we will even have a war on prices at Mattress Barn this President's Day. War is in our blood. 
And with another billion people on the way with no end in sight, it's only going to get more difficult to isolate ourselves. We must find a way to live in peace, or at least find a way to live without war. And thank you for listening to me talk a little bit of shit at you. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I know that we must talk about these issues if we're ever going to find understanding. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.